Welcome to mini lecture number nine and 7503 NSE Aviation Economics. Well, so far we've been going through the course and we're really starting to get a pretty good understanding of how airlines work as to how they uh, come up with what they're going to offer potential customers and as to how they go out searching for the right routes to make the money. And also we looked at fleet planning as part of our uh, lecture number seven. What we touched on in fleet planning was the fact that in making their plans, we said buying aircraft is very capital intensive. And of course, the one thing that we know is that airlines these days don't want to have too much money tied up in the capital they have because it incurs high interest rates. And what we're going to be talking about today is actually how airlines can go about fleet financing. Now this sounds as though it might be a boring subject, but in fact it is a fascinating subject just in seeing how the world of money operates and seeing the way in which a number of aviation businesses have grown out of the way in which fleet financing is done. So what are we going to be doing today? We're going to be first of all talking about the economic features of commercial aircraft. We've built some of these already. We're going to be talking about the major source of funds that airlines can find within and how they can find funds outside the airlines. We're going to be talking about the advantages and disadvantages of leasing and compare the use of operating and capital leases. Now, do you remember leasing when we did um, our fleet planning? We're going to be talking about balance sheet and describing the major items appearing under assets and liabilities. And this is going to then give us some of the different metrics that we're building up in understanding the world of aviation economics. We're going to be talking about return on investment and other factors, and we're going to identify the carriers likely to have difficulty in generating funds in the money market for the future. And we're going to discuss the importance of cash management and financial planning. Now, this is really important, this part of the lecture, because what we find in this lecture is we understand how people can go out who've never been in the airline industry, but can almost start an airline overnight, even though we said starting an airline can be a very expensive proposition. And it accounts for the fact that why there are so many airlines still starting in the world today, whilst there are a large number of airlines that are folding up. So this is what makes it a fascinating lecture. Well, first of all, the one thing that we find in aviation economics is it's like our own lives. Just as we find difficulty sometimes in financing large purchases, so airlines find the same difficulty in coming up with new equipment. And of course, the more they have to borrow to get new equipment, the more their debt to equity ratio changes. And of course, it makes it harder to get finance in the future. It's a little bit like when you go along to the bank. If you've got a lot of debts that you're currently paying off, the bank will see you as a poor risk. As I'll say, well, if we lend you money, we might get you to the stage where you find it too hard to repay us. Airlines are exactly the same, and banks take the same attitude with an airline as they do with individual lenders. And of course, the thing that we study is the deregulation not only brought about huge changes in the airline industry, but it meant that carriers had to be better at management, marketing, strategic planning, cost control, and looking after the competition. Before deregulation, governments very often guaranteed routes and guaranteed that there wouldn't be a lot of competition. And in fact, some air airlines almost operated in a monopoly-like situation. So this is one of the things. Airlines have to really be careful now in all the aspects, including their economic management. And of course, the one thing that we can see is that while the survival of one firm may not be of short-term national importance, the long-term impact may be less competition. And so what we'll be studying in the course is explaining the reason why when airlines apply to fly into Australia, then the government takes a control over that. When airlines want to buy up the competition, government takes a strong control on that because governments want to make sure that they guarantee competition because competition generally means lower prices for travellers. 
we're going to examine the major sources of funds for airlines. And of course, we look at internal sources and obviously, internal sources, profits. The profits that airlines make, we said it's not much on an individual seat, but when you've got a 400 seat aircraft, that can add up to substantial amounts. And airlines always are putting money aside for looking at the future. But the one thing is, if you're starting off an airline, it takes you a long time to build up profits. So of course, external sources come in. And we look at all sorts of things. We look at debt financing, that is going along to a bank and borrowing money, so you're in debt. Equity financing, which is where you go out to the public and say, buy shares of my airline, and you can own part of my airline. And that's a quick way of bringing in money without having to worry about the debt you've taken on. Because if your airline falls, the people who have bought shares in your company just lose money. We're going to look at leasing. And this is a specialised area within itself. A huge number of companies have grown in the aircraft leasing area. We're going to look at vendor financing. For example, Airbus, Boeing and other people who make aircraft will lend money to the right people to help buy their aircraft. It's good for them. They sell more aircraft. Then we'll look at venture capital. These are the people who are looking for above average returns on the money. And very often you'll find that these are the very people who will go out and they will lend perhaps to a leasing company or lease to a particular airline that's prepared to take the risk to give the higher rate of return by paying higher interest on the capital that they get. So all of these sources each has got its advantages, each has got its disadvantages, and we'll look at all of these in detail. The big thing is, what we find is that when we look at each of them, we find that debt financing is very, very good, but there are a number of places that you can go to, and these places all have different conditions. So it's obviously important to understand the different sources of debt financing. Whereas equity financing, there is a whole stack of new rules that come under the rule here. And for example, uh, those of you who are Australian students will have remembered that Qantas, Qantas's shares have been very, very stagnant over the last number of years. They've been dropping down and have only just started to increase in value again. But Qantas hasn't paid a dividend for a long time and people are hoping that this year they may pay a dividend. For example, people, when they buy shares, they not only want to see the share increase in value, they want to get a dividend played. So the one thing that we learn out of all this is investments generally come from debt rather than equity because over the past 10 years, airlines have not been a good place to go and invest. That is, you can get a better return from a lot of other areas and airlines are only just starting to show, especially with cheaper oil prices, that there's money to be made there. And that's been particularly so in the United States. We're going to be looking at all the different types of loans that people can go into and say, well, what are the conditions that you take on for these loans? And the one thing is that when we look at the equipment itself, for example, when someone lands on an aircraft, then what we want to find out is, well, what's the equity that goes on that aircraft? What are the conditions that go with it? It's the usual story, as with any loan. The more conditions you take on, usually, that means you're a greater risk. And so you'll obviously have to pay a lot more for your money. And so what we take into account is that when people take out these loans, when they go under certain conditions, they don't get to own the asset. And so it means that if they default on the loan, the lending institution simply takes the aircraft back off them. And so there's a lot of risk involved. We'll look at all those different things and what airlines take on we'll see that there's a greater trend towards leasing. And of course, in 1984, only 20% of the world's aircraft were leased. By 2013, about 36% are leased. And what we're finding is that soon, we'll be getting up to where 50% of the world's fleet is leased. So when you look at the figures in this slide here, there are about 150 leasing companies. Now that's a huge amount, but some people might only have a couple of aircraft. Some will have huge fleets and we'll be studying those different uh, companies and how they operate. We'll be looking at aircraft leasing. What are the advantages? The fact that you can get an aeroplane immediately. 
It means that you keep your funds for other things that you want, such as you might be planning to expand into new routes. You can spend the money there rather than having it tied up in aircraft. You've got flexibility with it. You've got the same costs of maintenance, insurance and taxes. You possibly get earlier delivery. For example, when a new aircraft comes out, the leasing companies actually buy up very early and then people have to come along to them to get their aircraft or perhaps wait years. You've got a core competency focus. That is, the leasing company looks after the aircraft. You simply focus on flying people. And of course, there are tax advantages. And we'll look at some of the general tax rules, uh, but they do vary from country to country. We'll be looking at the operating lease. And the operating lease has got very good financial features. It's a lease that you can't cancel once you're into. The lessor's got full title. The lessee's got no debt on the books. There's not a large amount of initial outflow, but of course the costs are generally fairly high. If we look at uh, the financial lease itself, uh, we find a different uh, in that conditions from the operating lease. And we'll be going into these in much greater detail in the course itself and working out when would you want to take out a financial lease, when might you take out an operating lease. If we take a look now at starting to understand a little bit more about the finances of the airline, and we've looked at this in different metrics along the way, we take a look first of all at a company's balance sheet. And we don't go into any more economics on this than simply saying that the balance sheet tells us to, uh, gives us the skill to be able to look at a company's balance sheet and look at the assets and the liabilities to work out the net worth of the company. That's all that we have to do. We're not going to be going into accounting one, but just enough to be able to read, be able to go online as part of your assignment research, look at a company's balance sheet and be able to work out some of the key metrics that come from understanding assets, liabilities and net worth. And we take a look at some of these. The current ratio, which is the indicator of a company's liquidity, that is, how much money can it actually turn into available funds? And this comes from dividing the current assets to the current liabilities. We're going to be looking at the long-term debt-to-equity ratio. And this is a primary indicator of a company's long-term borrowing power. That is, obviously, the more debt you've got, the more money you owe, the harder it is to get money, just as you find the same when you go along to the bank. So it's important to understand these two particular metrics. Then we come to that last one, that really important one, return on investment. If we're going to invest money getting assets for the company, what sort of return can we get from them? And as we've seen in previous lectures, some airlines can get a lot more value or more revenue from a particular asset than another airline with exactly the same asset. And that comes down to things such as productivity uh, of aircraft and people. We're going to be looking at cash. Why is cash so important? Obviously, if you're borrowing or you're leasing, you need to have cash to come into service debt. Just as when you borrow money, you need cash to service your debts. And airlines need to keep a track to make sure that they have got enough cash coming in to service their debts because borrowers are particularly harsh on airlines. The airline industry has had a number of problems over the last 20 years and borrowers know it is a high risk area and so cash flow is really important. And we'll be talking about the importance of cash flow in making sure that you operate. So in summary, we've looked at where airlines can go to to get their funds, their internal funds that come from their profits or if they go for debt or equity financing in the future or using those other sources, vendor financing, leasing and um, various other sources. We're going to be looking at the advantages and disadvantages of leasing and compare the use of operating leases and capital leases. And these are really important because a lot of airlines now are using leasing and the forecasts are that more airlines are going to be going towards leasing in the future. It's a good way to operate. We're going to look at the balance sheet and look at assets and liabilities and how these can be used to give us particularly important metrics. And these metrics are not only used by the airline to trace its health, but they're used by borrowers to assess 
your ability. And these are the current ratio, the long-term debt to equity ratio, and return on investment, because return on investment is going to be particularly important in that next one, and that is generating funds, the cash flow that you need to make sure you can service your debt for the future. This is a particularly interesting lecture because it really talks about whether an airline lives or dies, and this is part of the very aggressive climate that airlines operate in, and it's become a more important part because airlines these days need to be able to respond to markets, and if the market is growing, airlines have got to respond quickly, and they have to be able to get funding somehow to be able to expand their fleets to meet the market demands. This is a lecture I'm sure you really enjoy. Thank you.